Hi guys, so I've got this lovely big box of Orcs, uh, the Combat Patrol box. These are obviously awesome boxes, these are. And obviously, I use this for all the Orcs for my Warhammer 40k chess set. But these Death Copters at the top, well, I've still got them left over. So this box was sent to me by those lovely people over at Firestorm Games. There was a link in the description, guys. Uh, if you go and click on any of the links and buy anything, I am an affiliate. So every time you buy something, I get a few pennies. But as you can see, they do a whole ton of sort of Warhammer, Games Workshop sort of miniatures. But yeah, the Compact Patrol box is the one that I got. So yeah, as I say, I did all the, um, or used up all the Orcs for my Warhammer 40k chess set. So as you can see, the box is now rather empty. But I do have a few of these Death Copters left. Um, I did make one up and paint it normally. But obviously this time, I want to make one into something a little bit different. As it's been a while since I've done any kit bashing. And well, kit bashing is fun. Especially if you don't know quite what you're going to make. So, usual thing, get all the tools ready. Uh, I've got two types of glue here. Um, just in case I glue any 3D, part, 3D printed parts to the miniature. Um, so I've got some normal super glue. Snips and obviously a nice, well, I would say a sharp blade. But the blade I've got, um, yeah, haven't changed it in ages. But it's great for obviously scraping off uh, mould lines and all the rest of it. So, yeah, cutting the part out. Um, again, not too sure what bits I'm going to use. Uh, so I'm starting off with just the main body. And this Tamiya Extra Fin Glue is really good because obviously you can put the part together and then you sort of, well, it's almost like painting over it. Uh, but you sort of like put the glue over the joins, it seeps in and yeah, makes everything stick together. So the first thing I want to do is get the pilot out as I want to put my own sort of uh, rider in this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, I wasn't too sure <laughs> how to get this thing out. So I've got some of these sort of tools or bits and pieces that were my Dremel kit uh, but I couldn't find the actual Dremel thing so I've stuck these into my cordless drill um, and as you can see I was kind of getting nowhere so this is where that expression uh, the right tool for the right job um, yeah this was like me taking a hammer to fix a TV so I've sort of <laughs> gone to just using my clips um, this is probably why I've gone through quite a few of these snips um, as they do obviously occasionally break and it's probably generally for me sort of misusing them uh, and trying to cut thick bits of plastic. But I just kept going and yeah, eventually I <laughs> got the sucker out. So yeah, just in case of sort of tidying up, uh, obviously my little hack marks there. So trim away as much as I can and then using my sort of, yeah, my blunt knife just to try and scrape any extra areas out. Uh, I will fill the area in uh, later on, um, probably with some blue stuff or something similar. Um, but yeah. So this is obviously the fun, uh, exciting bit, as well as obviously sometimes the nervous bit, is cutting bits away. Uh, say, I didn't really have a, a, <laughs> had a little bit of an idea of what I was sort of trying to make, um, but sometimes you do sort of just, well, you wing it and, yeah, hope happy little accidents will happen as you go along. So, yeah, just cutting bits off here and there that I didn't sort of need. Uh, so I'm left with sort of the, the bike sort of bit. Um, and, yeah, so any bits I cut off, obviously I was... I keep. I've got a good old bits box here with, well, variety of gubbins, but they'll be used later on. So I was kind of thinking, I like the idea of obviously a pod racer having a couple of big jets either side. Um, so it's going to be like part pod racer, part helicopter. And yeah, using some good old uh, army painter sort of bottles as they are perfect size for little thrusters. So yeah, good old random bits box. Uh, this really does have bits that have been cut off and yeah. <laughs> this is where bits go to die, basically. So using some wheels, um, they seem like a good idea to put on the end as kind of like the intake of the thruster. But obviously these thrusters, I want them to look a bit sort of, well, orc made. So I want to stick loads and loads of exhausts and bits of pieces, gubbins, all the rest of it. Obviously any guns I find, yeah, I'm going to keep them. And yeah, that's just a case of kind of like gluing bits together. Again, no real sort of plan or idea here, but that's that's the fun of the kit bashing sometimes, is not having the plan, making it up as you go along, uh, because then you don't quite know what you're going to end up with, which sometimes is fun. Although, I must admit, 90% of the time, I guess I do have quite a good plan in my head. Uh, but yeah, obviously when you are doing things with a bits box, it is a case of, well, what's in my bits box for me to use. So here we go again, a good use of using these cutters. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't snap because I really was using these to cut everything. Um, I do need to really get another Dremel tool and get some nice sort of, uh, well, nice little cutting bits and pieces. Just make it easier for one. 
um, and to yeah, save my snips from uh, <laughs> from breaking. So this is obviously where I'm using some super glue because I'm sort of gluing bits together that aren't uh, aren't all the sort of GW plastic bits. So yeah, using the old filler, um, I always forget which one this, this is called, this filler. So as you can see, it's not the blue stuff, because obviously the blue stuff is pretty expensive and great for sort of finer work. This is the cheaper one, which I say the name escapes me. If I do remember it, I'll put it in the description somewhere. Uh, but again, it's a two-part sort of uh, mix. Uh, and then yeah, it sort of dries really well. But say so this stuff, you can't really do too much with it, as in like high detailed work. And there you go, yeah, loving how this is looking. Um, so definitely pod racer looking. Uh, and now, yeah, now the fun bit of so all these gubbins. Obviously these plastic uh, paint bottles, but well, they still look like plastic paint bottles. So these do need lots of exhausts. Uh, and just, well, yeah, gubbins. I was at Greeblies, isn't it? That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, Greeblies. Uh, just little random pieces stuck all over it. No pattern, obviously, whatsoever with this. It is just a case of filling in any bits so yeah on my hands that's not uh, baking soda I wasn't using that to dry the things that is dust every time I've sort of cut a bit off I've given it a little sand just to make it uh, well sometimes make it fit better where it's meant to go so yeah so for me this is this is the fun bit is just yeah sticking bits all over so anyone who has been my channel for a while will know I used to have a guy called crazy Dave uh, it was an orc and uh, basically anytime I did do any kit bashing or making it any weird and wonderful bits and pieces. Yeah, Crazy Dave is my test pilot. So I 3D printed this guy out uh, from Mr. Modulork. I'll leave the link in the description to his uh, 3D miniatures as they are awesome and obviously all orcs. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I couldn't quite get him to fit on the bike, so I had to cut his leg off, <laughs> make him sit on the thing, and then reattach his leg. But all's good in the end, and yeah, loving how this is looking. But obviously, the one thing it is definitely missing. And that is weapons. And when we say weapons, we mean we bombs, machine guns. Um, so yeah, everyone always mentions there's never enough DACA on a um, an old vehicle. And I know even though I stick loads on this, yeah, it's still not enough. Uh, but yeah, so starting off with some nice big bombs. These were all 3D printed on my Anycubic Photon Mono um, X. I have got a new one just turned up, the Mono X2. And I will be doing some prints of that very, very soon. So, yeah, again, no real pattern to this. I just wanted to pile on weapons. So I've kind of started with the biggest weapons and then gone down to the smallest ones. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of missiles on here. But in all terms, it's still never enough. So now on to painting this. And I think we all know what I'm going to do here. Yep, that's it. I'm going to prime in black, dry brush grey, dry brush white. And I get this lovely sort of ghosty looking sort of thing. Um, I say, I, I love the look of this. I could quite easily have an army just like that. And yeah, if you've seen in recent videos, I have got those lovely Army Painter Speed Paints 2.0. Although you'd have seen a recent video where I would have painted all these lids just to make it easy to see exactly how the colours are going to look over the uh, the dry brushing. So yeah, it's time with the old silver. Uh, obviously very excited to try out silver. Um, I only used a little bit in the last video. Um, and the one thing I did sort of mention is it sort of covers really, really well. Um, it comes out nice. It's obviously watery. Uh, that's my technical term for, the, for how this paint is. Um, but yeah, covers really nice. Really gets into all nooks and crannies. And yeah, it's a real good paint to use. But as you will see a little bit later on, um, it doesn't quite have the same effect as the speed paints, as in having like the, the highlights, the normals and the shadows. It doesn't quite seem to sort of get that sort of range as well as the other speed paints. Um, yes, yeah, so again, using some of the new paints, this is where things are going to be a lot easier for me now. I say I'll put a link somewhere so you can go and see the video where I've done all the paints from the Army Painter Speed Paint 2.0 as I painted the lids um, in the same sort of slap chop fashion so I can see exactly how each one is going to look once it's applied. So this is quite a nice red because the red I did have previously was quite a... Uh, more of a vibrant sort of blood red. So this is more of a sort of a neutral looking red, which uh, works better for, I think, um, vehicles. As, yeah, you don't want them looking too sort of, well, too shiny and new. So, yeah, going over where I think most of these sort of normal red parts will be. So this vehicle, obviously, is mostly metal. So, yeah, lots of red, lots of uh, silver. And we're going to do, obviously, bits of bronze here and there. I say, just to keep it sort of a metallic 
looking color. So the bronze, this one does seem to um, work, I think, a bit better than the silver. This one does seem to have some sort of darker areas. Um, again, definitely not quite as good as the sort of normal uh, speed paints as these sort of metallic ones. So they have like a darker area and then a normal area. They don't seem to really give that highlighted area um, yeah, quite as much as the, the other speed paints, but still good. So yeah, again, if you've seen the last video, there's about eight or nine, maybe 10. I need to count them really, so I know exactly how many there are. Um, different greens. Uh, and as obviously I do love my orcs. It's nice having that huge variety in colors and green. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely gonna be doing a kill team soon with orcs. And I'm gonna be doing each one, well, as a different color green, just to sort of mix it up. So that should look pretty cool. So yeah, again, this is where <laughs> I love the fact that I have now painted these lids. Um, so obviously these colors is like, I'm gonna use yellow. I haven't got a clue how it's gonna look on this because the, uh, the yellow from Speed Paint 1 um, actually comes out more orange. Uh, and I do use it as an orange. And I have just recently gone through all my, uh, my sort of old Speed Paints, the Speed Paint 1, um, and done the same with them with the lids. Just again, so I can see exactly what they're gonna look like because I do know the uh, the previous yellow was very much orange. So yeah, obviously we're trying to mix up these uh, these missiles so they're not just obviously boring, plain sort of, well, white and silver. That's why I'm doing a little bit of a pattern on these larger ones. And yeah, I'll be doing the same, similar sort of thing on the smaller ones, doing the good old sort of checkered look. Um, and yeah, just sort of make them look a little bit different. So again, using the, the speed paints, um, Obviously, speed paints work really, really well when you've got a sort of a highly textured miniature. So when you paint over a flat area, uh, yeah, you don't really get much of the effect that you uh, you should do. But you will see later on that I do go over the whole vehicle um, just to sort of say some of these areas do look a bit flat. So I do use something later on, but you'll, you'll see that in a second. So yeah, simply painting. Um, yeah, it's fun to paint. So doing the checkered sort of bit, just to make it easier for myself, sometimes I have used a thin black marker pen to do the squares. Uh, but this time I thought I'd have a go using the paint to paint the squares. So obviously making, um, well, doing a pencil line first, just to make it easier for me to obviously put those little squares in. Because obviously the squares, as they get nearer the end, are going to get a bit smaller. Um, because obviously the squares aren't meant, aren't meant to be square. Um, and yeah, sort of simple pencil line, and then just sort of... <laughs> draw or paint within the lines, uh, which sometimes can be fun. So I've got a good steady hand. It is just my eyesight sometimes that kind of like lets lets me down. Um, I've, tried the, I've tried the big magnifying glass before. Didn't have much luck with that. It felt like I was watching a TV and trying to paint. Uh, it was a little bit difficult. Well, I have seen the, the glasses or magnifying glasses that sort of go on your head. Um, so yeah, I might give them a go one day just to sort of see if I can do some finer Detailed, detailed work with those. So guys, I have recently bought quite a few boxes of vehicles, um, just purely because I want to do some um, kit bashing. So the vehicles I brought aren't going to be made up as the vehicles, obviously they're intended. They are going to be, yeah, kit bashed into stuff. So guys, let me know in the comments what um, sort of kit bashed thing you'd like to see. Obviously the sets I've got are quite small, so I can't make like a, a huge spaceship. Uh, but if there's any kind of sort of like tank, Especially more so, obviously, things that um, Games Workshop don't make, then it'd be fun to try and make something, obviously, out of bits and pieces, um, yeah, of something they don't make. So any vehicles you can think of that Games Workshop don't make that you'd like to see fielded in a 40k game, um, yeah, by all means let me know and I will have a go, oh, see what I can make. So that's it, nearly done. Um, although I seem to have lost the footage because I actually go over all this metal area with a wash. I say just because it all looks too well just too plain silver so yeah i do do a wash but somehow i lost the footage so apologies for that so the base uh yeah keeping the base nice and simple um i have moved the hole from where it originally was and i'm going to put it in the center uh just so this thing doesn't fall over uh, and yeah just to sort of make the plastic bit sort of merge in with the rest of it i'm just putting a bit of good old grout over the edge and then yeah simply painted um come out well and there you go, yeah, job done. So really pleased how this looks. Um, and yeah, it just looks a fun little thing. And obviously here it is in all its glory. So this is obviously with a, a better light sort of source on it. Um, and yeah, that is one mean sort of looking Defcopter. Again, not enough DACA because they'll never, they'll never ever 
I could put 10 times this amount. And there'd always be that comment, yeah, not enough DACA. But um, yeah, for me, <laughs> it's got quite a bit. If I put it too much more on, he would just topple over. So guys, let me know what you thought of this video. Um, if you like the look of this guy. And again, yeah, if anything you want to sort of see me make, then yeah, definitely leave some comments about that, guys. And if you can share this video on any sort of social media, that would be awesome, guys. As obviously it just helps promote my channel. There's another video on the screen. Give that a click, see more of what I do. And a big thank you to Chaos Cards and all my patrons for helping support the channel. There's a link down below, guys, to Chaos Cards, and you can get a discount of 5% off any of their miniatures. And yeah, that's it, guys. Okay, you all take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.